and he is also former a to s president Glo jonathan he's also a human rights activist reno is based coming to us from london today thank you so much for taking the time to join us i mean you, you you've seen you've heard the contributions made by prof what would you say has brought back coup in west africa well if you look at coups in west africa traditionally coups in west africa have always started in the francophone countries so the first coup in West Africa started January 13th in Togo, January 13th, 1963, when um, Nasingbe Eyadema, he removed the uh, presidency of Olympia. Olympia. And now you see that uh, Togo shares a border with Benin Republic. So you had January 13th, 1963, there was a coup in Togo. And then nine months later, October 28th, 1963, there was a coup in Benin Republic, where Christoph Togo removed uh, President uh, uh, Hubert Magra. Now, if you look at it now, the next coup that happened, happened in Nigeria. And Nigeria shares a border with Benin Republic. And that was the January um, uh, 15, 1966 coup. So you can see that it has a contagious effect. It begins in the Francophone countries, and then it gradually spreads to the Anglophone countries. You see? And then the, the, the next coup that you had was in Ghana. So you can see all these countries, they, they share borders, contemporary, uh, they share borders together. So now, what we have to ask, and uh, I'm so glad that Professor asked that question, why does it begin in the Francophone countries? You see, the reasons that are, that are, you know, are, that are used for the coups, they say, okay, like um, corruption, uh, maladministration. But if you look at the Francophone countries, they are not like the Anglophone countries. Like, for instance, in Nigeria, we have complete control over our monetary policies, over our currency. In the Francophone countries, they don't have that control. Their currency, CIP, is controlled by France completely, totally controlled by France. They have very little influence over their currency. So mm -hmm. even their government, there's, they have limitations on what they can do. Mm -hmm. And then if you now look at what's happening now in this um, resurgence of coup, because you say that there's a resurgence of coup in Africa. No, there's only a resurgence of coup in West Africa. It's not an African problem, it's a, it's a regional problem. It started in Mali, it's gone to Burkina Faso, Chad, you see it in. So it's, it's, it's coming from these Francophone countries. And so we need to be asking ourselves, why the Francophone countries? Perhaps the Francophone countries need to have more independence, I mean, full independence, not just political independence, but also economic independence. Because if we don't help them to achieve that, what we might see is that just like it happened in the 60s, they, they might start to be contagious you know, um, uh, effects in other countries. And then also, we see that there is region, you know, in every region in Africa, and not just in Africa, all around the world, you, you should have a regional superpower. Now, in this case, Nigeria is meant to be the regional superpower. But we are seeing um, ineffective and weak leadership in Nigeria, and that is, effect, is, is, is affecting the sub-region. I'll give you a very good example. In 2003... Renault, 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 would you, to, to state that there's a weak leadership and government in Nigeria, uh, some would not agree with you to, to, to actually classify the government as being weak. Uh, the, I mean, those is a political season. Some would not agree with you. Uh, and I don't think that would be fair on the government to come to you such, to go down that lane. Well, it doesn't, you don't have to agree with me, but I mean, you have to agree with the facts. So if you look at what happened in 2003, when there was a coup in Sao Tome and Principe, where Frederick de Menezes, incidentally, he was visiting Abuja, President of Basanjo, when there was a coup, I think it was done by Colonel uh, Fernando Pereira. Now, if you look at what President of Basanjo did then, I don't know if you recall, President of Basanjo called uh, Colonel Pereira and told him, listen, he used a carrot and stick approach. He said, you have done this thing, we will not tolerate you know, a military coup in West Africa. So, I mean, Encouraging you return power back to president, the elected president, uh, um, the But if you don't, here's what's going to happen. I will come there and I will physically remove you. And then if you recall, President Obasanjo just sent Nigerian alpha jets and they were hovering around the presidential palace. And then eventually there were negotiations and then the coupies, they surrendered power. And then President Obasanjo got on a plane with President de and took him back to his country and, and reinstalled him. So that is regional leadership so when you say that uh, you might disagree with me look we have very very weak and ineffective leadership in nigeria look what's happening if nigeria cannot look right now we have in a place like zampara 
we have bandits that have surface to air missiles. The president of Nigeria could not even go to Zampara. He came up with a shoddy excuse of bad weather. So when you are seeing the regional superpower having displaying weakness, then it's like a dog. A dog, when it, for instance, a dog will never attack a person when the person shows confidence. But because when you show weakness, your body produces hormones, and dogs can smell those hormones. And so when they, when they see weakness, it's like, for instance, we talked about Ukraine. A lot of people have said that what is happening in, U in Ukraine is because Putin has sensed weakness in America. And that weakness is emboldening him. And that's why Ronald Reagan said in his Reagan doctrine in 1985 that the only way you can have peace is through strength. So when you have a regional superpower that is weak and showing ineffective leadership, I mean, look, I, I, we have to face Reno, I, I am in not the one. Today, we uh, have a leader who is an intellectually weak and weakling. And that is, you see all these leaders in uh, all these uh, places, all these polar countries, they're saying, okay, I mean, if we have a figure like Obasan job there, he can do something, but what can this one do? And it's emboldening them. So that is Reno, what I mean, uh, because, because of my time, uh, okay, 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 but because of Nigeria, my time, I... It's emboldening these cookies. Because of my time, I'm not saying I'm the one disagreeing with you. I say many will not will not agree with you on some of those things, the qualifications you're getting to the president, on the basis that Nigeria has its own problems it's dealing with. It's dealing with money, um, economic problems, it's dealing with um, insurgency in the country. It cannot leave his own problem to start attending to regional problems. So would you consider, that's why I say some will not agree with you, as a weakness on the part of the president? Because he's got his own problems too. Uh, can I respond to that? Please? Yes, in one minute. Okay. Okay, so in a country like Nigeria, what you have to understand is that if you are not taking care of all these crises that are occurring in other countries, it's going to affect your country. So you can see that when there were coups in the Mano River region, you have to understand that coups don't just come alone. If you look at history, and you have to remember that the best predictor of future events is past events. When coups happen, Within a space of five years, civil wars also happen. So coups, they don't just come in isolation. After about five years, you're mm. going to see civil wars. And those civil wars is going to lead to a displacement of populations. All right. And then those displacement of populations, they'll start coming to other right. countries that share borders with these countries. And then there's going to, it's going to cause tensions in those countries. So if you're saying that Nigeria has our own economic problems, Nigeria has our own political problems, these our economic and political problems will be multiplied by a factor of three if we do not do something in these our neighboring nations that are facing All right, crisis. Right Right. And we've seen that with history. That's why Nigeria sent Ekoma, um, what we call the Ekoma troops to the Mano River region. Mm. That's why we were able to, to stop the war in Syria alone and Liberia. President of Basojo, again, he did that. He brought President Chastelo and put right. in put right. him right. in because of my time. There. So ah. we need to look at this from the uh, historical perspective because coups, they don't, they don't just happen in isolation. After some time, civil wars happen. All right, thank you so much, Reno. Um, if I allow you to keep talking, I'm not going to leave this place. Prof, in one minute, what is the way forward for West Africa and indeed for Nigeria? There appears to be some kind of palpitating tensions in the country. People are not sure. Even the Nigerian government is not sure of its stance. That was a time to was talking about coup in the country. What is the way forward? In 50 seconds, Prof. Well, in 50 seconds, uh, you and Reno are correct. <laughs> uh, we talked about facts, but there are many versions of the fact. But since there is no time, the way forward is for the regional body, which is operating on the basis of the principle of subsidiarity, to learn to put greater emphasis on the interests of the people and not the government. Mm. The ECOWAS is existing not because of protection of... Um, elected president but their interest to be on the interest of the people all right prof thank you so much it's a pleasure to have you join us on the program i'm so sorry i may not be able to go beyond but reno next week uh, 19 is the anniversary of leah sharibu i know you and others have been at the forefront of uh, promoting uh, release we'll be glad to have you come back next week and let's talk about leah sharibu and the way forward for this poor girl who has been in captivity maybe this is another failure or a coup uh summer at some point but that'll be next week hopefully you'll be available so that i'll be able to look at these things
uh, well, I'll be available, but I uh, permit me if you can give me 50 seconds. To I, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I'm afraid I'm not. I'm 50 not. seconds, please. <laughs> okay. 50 seconds. Wow. Well, um, ECOWAS cannot be uh, looking after the interests of the people. ECOWAS has to look after the interests of democracy. Now, when you have a democratically elected government, it doesn't matter whether... Look, these people, they can sponsor people to come and do, to, do, to do protests. They can sponsor people to... We've, we've, we've seen it. Why do you think that Senegal is the only country in West Africa where there has never been a coup? The reason being that I, I'm afraid Senegal, this is how far I, I'm going to have to stop you, Reno. I'm so sorry. I may have to stop you here because of. I'm afraid I have to stop you here, Reno, because of. I wish I can just allow you to. I wish I can just allow you to continue to talk. It would be a great pleasure, but I have to talk because news is coming up right after this program. Thank you so much, Safa. I can go on the show today. Next week is another day. I'm sure Reno is going to have the time to join us as we look at the issue of um, Lia Sharibu, our fourth anniversary. My name is Tunia Labi. Stay out of trouble. I will pray. There will never be any coup in this country. Bye.